Thank you. Bring tears to my eyes, yeah? So, I have the papers, yes. So, welcome to the last day and to this um, intimate, intensive um, session. And uh, I'll be, I'm very excited to bring you up to speed with the ongoing evolution and growth of the Ubuntu movement, the philosophy of contributionism, how it's grown since 2005, how it's evolved into something that I now not only believe but truly know will change the world. It's just a matter of time. For those that don't know about it, it's okay. When their time has come, they will find out about it, and that's how this has grown. Um, when you're called, you'll, you'll know. So, Thank you for being here. This is by far the most important part of this journey. Unfortunately, it's also the most um, time-consuming and um, destructive because it it's literally sucks you dry. And that's what's happened to me in the last uh, six months, really. It's, uh, I've just run, run into a wall because the last 12 years has been a complete dedication to this and the dedication has increased and increased so to the point where I actually almost completely ignored my research and the ancient civilizations and the stone circles until the discovery of the fossils. It was like a huge wake-up call. Okay, you better start focusing here again. And uh, so I, I do this lecture and this workshop here today with, um, with joy and, uh, and a new vision and a new, um, uh, yeah, I guess vision or a, a deeper comprehension of what, what I should be doing into the future about this movement and how to take it forward to, so that it grows um, without restriction and financial um, encumberments because that's what it's all about, unfortunately. And that's what we're going to go through here. Um, Ubuntu Contributionism Workshop USA 2018. Very happy to be here. So this weekend has been a weekend of uh, incredible, diverse knowledge and information. And I always like to bring it to a focal point. What do we do with all this knowledge and information that we've acquired? Because it could get quite scary and quite freaky. This, some of the stuff that the, some of the researchers here talk about is not good. It's deeply disturbing. And it could send us down a, uh, a negative spiral in a bottomless, down a bottomless rabbit hole of worrying about the past and worrying what happened and this. And, and we forget about our lives here right now and what we're going to do tomorrow morning when we wake up and face the same slavery system. So that's really what I like to bring it back and let you know that that there is not just a shining light at the end of this tunnel, it's a very bright shining light at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> and, but, there is a but. <laughs> we have to do it. We have to walk towards the light. It's not going to come to us. If we don't take the journey, it's going to remain a light at the end of the tunnel and not become the enlightenment and the, the emancipation process that it's supposed to become. So we have to undertake this journey. And if we don't do anything, nothing is going to happen. It's a, it's a causality. It's a, it's a, it's a, we have to create the energetic flow to take it there. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. So that's why we are the ones we've been waiting for, and we, are, we need to walk this path and create this beautiful future utopian reality. I think, who is it? Was it Nassim yesterday that said in the panel, a utopian world? That's exactly what it is. I like the word utopian. It's a good word. You know, when people say, oh, that's just a utopian idea. I said, yes, it's a great utopian idea. I like utopian. We should all embrace utopian. It's not a bad word, but society has made it a bad word. It's in, isn't it interesting? We seem to destroy all the good things in our lives. The utopia that we deserve is destroyed through our own actions and our own negative our thoughts. So we're the ones we've been waiting for, and it's up to us to do something. And uh, hopefully by the time we finished here, uh, you will all know what this one thing is. And it's really very simple, but we have to do it together. We can't do it separated and divided the way we've become. So, as we start, I'd like to hand out these pieces of paper. If you just take one and pass it on. And if you have a pen, just think about while the pieces of paper are coming. I hope we, I hope we got enough. If, if you don't find a piece of paper, just find any piece of paper. I'd like you to, to think about, right now, while your brain is still free of any other stuff I've shared with you, imagine a world without money 
and uh, and your current perception of any any thing that you are worried, that you're concerned about that you can't figure out how how is this going to work if if we had a world without money how will this work or how will that work how will education work what will happen to to you know who's going to shovel the crap uh, whatever problems you might have with this one question the biggest hurdle you think we have uh, to living in a world free of money thank you Dave Dave no it's people Dave yeah. Dave was in South Africa with me at the Ubuntu festival and uh, he's a brilliant musician and uh, and just a, a brother in arms thank you Dave I'm just cold, I need something warm. <laughs> so just when you get the piece of paper or on your own piece of paper, write down that one thing, um, you like the question that you just can't figure out, how are we gonna cross this bridge? And, uh, and then when you finish with that, just pass it forward. Oh no, 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 don't. Leave it in your pocket, just put it in your pocket. And I'm gonna ask you to take it out at the end of this presentation, at this end of this workshop. And I want to see how you yourself are gonna be able to answer that question. <laughs> Where is the million dollars? <laughs> Where is Kruger's gold? <laughs> so any 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 hurdle that you th that you can't figure out in your mind, uh, you know, if you woke up tomorrow morning and or in this utopian world where money doesn't exist, any problem that you might figure out, well, how is how are we going to pay for university or? How, who's going to pay for the surgery, or how, how, who, how is the medical thing going to work, or how are the poor people going to afford the expensive surgery, whatever hurdle that you, because people struggle. There are thousands and thousands of emails that I got over the years. But what I can tell you, they all focus and filter down to 13 most frequently asked questions. That is the most staggering thing. Out of thousands and thousands and thousands of emails and questions over the last 12 years, they come down to 13 most frequently asked questions. It's incredible. It just shows me how equally poisoned we've become. <laughs> and we'll go through this. We'll go through this. Because I bet you that the question you're going to write down is going to be very similar to many of the other questions here. But you'll only find out at the end of this presentation, at this end of this workshop. So um, we are none are more enslaved than those who falsely believe they are free. And the emphasis there is on falsely. This is uh, Wolfgang Goethe's brilliant uh, Austrian uh, philosopher, uh, artist, um, poet, um, that made the statement a long time ago. And that is now obvious to us how painful that is, because this is more relevant in our lives than ever before in human history. We're the guys that have to deal with this reality. And the sad thing is that there's still so many people out there that don't get this. You know, you say, well, I've got freedom of choice. I can do what I want. I can go to movies. I can go to dinner. I can drive down to Cape Town or wherever you'll drive down here. I don't know. You'll drive down to Florida and, uh, you know, do what I want, man. I'm free. I say, wow, that's amazing. And then when, do you, when are you coming back? Oh, when I have to go back to work on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> or when my holiday's over, I'm coming back. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and those that are, you know, that are lucky, that are retired, they've made a lot of money or inherited a lot of money, they still think they're free, or they might think they're free because they got a lot of money, they don't have to work, until they have to cross a border. <laughs> Say, oh man, I tried to, go to, uh, tried to go to Canada and I couldn't get in there because they sent me away. Wow. So tell me about this freedom that you think you have. The <laughs> moment you start crossing borders, you realize how enslaved we are. That's actually one of the big wake-up calls. So let's carry on with this uh, journey. And uh, just for th some of you that are new to this, uh, what is Ubuntu? So very simply and very quickly, Ubuntu is a simple philosophy and our foundation for a new social structure. It's a, an ancient African philosophy um, that, uh, that talks about abundance, prosperity, unity. And uh, in this particular instance, an unlimited expression of the creative human spirit. Because ultimately, that is what, what human nature is all about, being creative, to create. That's better. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> is to create. 
to be creative. From the moment we are born, we create. We make sounds, we blow bubbles, we make shapes with our hands. And then we grow up and we draw pictures and we do things. And, and, uh, and then one day that stops. And we go, don't do that anymore. Put your dress on, go to school. Sit in the classroom, shut up, pay attention. And, and, and we become slave to, slaves to the system at a very early age, as you know right now. And that's when the conditioning begins. So the unlimited expression of creative human spirit, because that's what I personally believe is the main under, underpinning uh, characteristic of what we would call human nature, is to create. And um, so Ubuntu, ancient philosophy of unity and sovereignty, unity within community, working together for the benefit of our entire community and the whole world. Because once we've benefited a whole community, it naturally starts to spill over into our neighboring communities, because that's just what happens. Uh, using our unique individual skills, and there are as many unique individual skills as there are people in the world. That's the beautiful thing that you discover after you've been through this process. You know, initially you might think, well, what skills do I have? I'm no good to anyone. And you'd be wrong. You have skills. Everybody has got some very unique skills that they have maybe not have recognized. And what I find interesting is like when you read the Bible and other ancient texts of, uh, you know, the philosophical and, and texts with, encoded with, with deeper meaning and information, the, the, if you, you learn about the people that don't use their talents. They don't get rewarded, right? You have to use your talents, otherwise you don't get reward from life. And th that's just amazing. It's all out there. It's all sh telling us. Th these books and these ancient texts are telling us what we should and should not be doing. So using our unique individual skills for the benefit of everyone, not just ourselves. And um, there is a, a Native uh, American the Cherokee saying, which is, which is the exp uh, uh, expression that I've connected to the Ubuntu movement, and it says, if it's not good for anyone, it's, if it's not good for everyone, it's no good at all. And it just beautifully encompasses it. Because if I do something in my, in my family that disturbs the rest of the family, then clearly uh, I'm doing something that's not good for the harmony of my community. And um, then continues, being loved and honored as individuals because of who you are and what you do. And isn't that what all of us want? It's just to be respected and loved for who we are and what we do. That's all we want to do. Look how badly people want to be recognized for what they do. That's what we've spent pretty much all our lives, you know, develop careers so people recognize and become an artist or a musician so people can recognize your musical talent. Or basically, quite frankly, I believe that most people that start up companies and corporations are just frustrated musicians because they can't sing and perform. They start a company to make as much money to show how good they are at something. It's really an expression of that creative talent and the only way they can put it is in a corporate kind of structure. That's the underlying motivation here. It's to create something. I've created this company. That's what people say. This is my company. I built it up over 20 years. That's your creative expression. Except it's channeled in the wrong, in the, down the wrong channel. And it's fine because we've now learned after 12 years of trials and tribulations and walking down this very blood, sweat and tears, difficult path, we figured out that we can't fight the system. Doesn't matter how noble your fight is. It's the old paradigm thinking. You have to step out of that kind of thinking. We're not going to win this, not that we want to overcome anybody, but we're not going to turn this world into a place of abundance if we continue with any kind of violence, opposition, or conflict. So that's the first thing that we need to change. So how do we change from here, from this slavery oppressed system into a beautiful utopian world where everybody lives, lives freely without any money, in harmony, expressing their talents. How do we get there without any violence, opposition, or conflict? And it took me nearly 12 years to figure this out because the, sometimes the answers are so obvious and they're so, so close to you that you can't even see them because you're looking through them and you don't focus on the most important things right in front of you, the closest message to you. <laughs> and that is, we're going to use the tools of enslavement as tools of liberation. I tell you what, that is the most sobering thing, and it's taken me 12 years to figure this out. And I've tried all kinds of stuff, and the moment I started sharing this simple philosophy, everything started to fall into place. And everything starts to make sense. Because everything around us, remember this, everything around us, this entire socioeconomic structure, the world that we were born into, was created as an enslavement trap. Everything. So 
everything, the, the, the hospital systems, the education systems, the, the corporate systems, the, the town council systems, the government systems, everything is designed to enslave us and control us. So we can't fight that and beat that. We can only overcome it if we take that and use it to our benefit. Because if you try and fight it, you will lose. You see, what has happened to everyone that's ever opposed the system or the government or the banks or, or the sheriff? You can't win it. So it's like martial arts. You take the energy and the force that comes against you and you turn it around so it works for you. That's it. Aikido, Tai Chi, all these brilliant uh, martial arts uh, philosophies that go back thousands of years. So being loved and honored as individuals for who we are and what we contribute to our communities, that's, that is a beautiful, harmonious community that I want to be living in and I want to live in. And, uh, and the most commonly used expression for Ubuntu is I am who I am because of who we all are. Uh, very interesting, Crystal. You, most of you should be familiar with Dr. Masiro Umoto who became famous for um, discovering the fact that crystals take on these brilliant shapes by simply speaking to water. Sorry, water takes on these beautiful shapes by speaking to water. And when you trap the, cap capture the water in, in, in these crystals, every crystal actually represents the words or even the thoughts that you put into the water. And uh, so when he was in Cape Town at my friend's uh, health center, the Ubuntu health center in Cape Town, which is a really a beautiful place, um, he spoke Ubuntu into the water, and then they made these crystals out of it, and that's what the crystal looked like. So that is officially a, a Masero Emoto Ubuntu crystal, wa uh, water crystal. And this is what he then had to say about it. He said, the Ubuntu water crystal by Masero Emoto, a beautiful circle appeared inside the crystal. I believe that this circle is Ubuntu itself. It signifies that everything is in perfect harmony. Only when everything is in harmony and accord, all the beings will attain true happiness. And then the question, what is contributionism? Because you saw me right there, Ubuntu contributionism workshop. So in 2004 and five, when I was researching the origins of humankind for my book, Slave Species of God, that's when I actually stumbled upon this insane idea that uh, you know, we don't need money in the world because money was actually created as a tool of enslavement. And, uh, and I, this was a shock to the system. So I tried to figure out how a world without money would look and what would we do, how would we work. And it was, I must tell you, I would really urge you to, to do this for yourself. Just start thinking about it for yourself. Like if tomorrow morning I woke up and there was no money in the world, what would we do? How would we work? And you'll see the more you think about it, the answers come uh, exponentially quickly. It starts and you know, it takes you a little while, but fortunately, I think the co cosmic collective consciousness has allowed these thoughts to filter into it. So it'll probably they'll probably come to you a lot quicker than they came to me in 2005. <laughs> you know, it took me about six months to figure out the first question, and then it took about three weeks to figure out the next question, and then it took about two days, th and then it just went boom. Once you figured the the basics out, then it's easy. Then it just flows, and it's just downhill from there. So I had to come up with a name of what would this, this society where people contribute their skills and talents, what would we call it? And that's where the word contributionism came up. And I came under a lot of flack. Oh, it's just another ism. You know, and then you go, oh, God, I'm getting attacked. It's another ism. It's bad. And, I, and it took me a while to get over that, too. And I realized, no, the comeback to that is, yes, it is an ism. But it's like no other ism that's there, that we've ever had. Because every other ism we've had worked with money. This is the first ism that will work completely without money. And that's why it makes it so completely unique. And it's like no other ism. And this is one ism we can certainly embrace. Because it'll be the one that will bring us complete freedom from financial and economic slavery and bring us into that utopian society that we all so desperately want to get into. So contributionism then evolved with a five-point mantra. And no matter how I've tried over the last 12 years, it has remained five points. 